Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Intelligent3273 from the Am I the Arsehole here subreddit and says, Am I the arsehole for making my husband choose the divorce he asked for? And it says, So, I came on here a while back to seek advice. I was wondering if I was wrong for asking my husband to put off the divorce he requested for a few years while I finished up schooling. Consensus was, I was the arsehole. Since then, I've worked on myself and decided to ask for the alimony and child support I deserve. I've been a stay-at-home for 10 years and helped build his small business along the way. Originally, my husband was miserable to be around and wasn't himself when I told him I needed some time before the divorce to be on my feet. I came on here and everyone told me the poor guy felt trapped because of my request. So I let that shit go and said we'll get the full divorce four month process in our state and move on with our lives. I have the paperwork ready, told him to find a lawyer. He found one that wasn't licensed. Through simple channels, I was able to find out that the person claiming to be a lawyer online was not licensed through the state. I run the operations for a small business, so I'm savvy in these things. My husband is incredible in his field. Not exaggerating, he's one of the best, if not the best in his profession where we live. But the business side of things has been all me since we've met. Since I helped him dodge a bullet, he hasn't put much effort in the divorce process. Here's the kicker. I agreed to pretty much everything he recommended we do. Stay living together as long as possible. He takes the guest room while I stay in the primary bedroom. When he decides to start dating, he moves out and we try our hand at bird nesting with the kids. The kids stay at home, we rotate as parents with him coming twice a week for overnights and every day for short visits. Continue to help operate the business without being put on the payroll. I was never on payroll to save on taxes. If things get contentious, which I doubt they will on my end, I always do my job even when we've had the ugliest fights. Then I will find a manager for the business to fill my position. Agree to 50-50 custody and joint decision making so that he doesn't feel like I have the upper hand with the courts. This, even though we'll be doing an 80-20 split in reality, and I am the primary decision maker. The problem is this. He hasn't moved his feet to get this process going on his end. He's been acting like things are good between us, asking for hugs and being more supportive than he was during our marriage. We have sex still, but I don't snuggle him afterwards, slash shut down pillow talk and keep things professional otherwise. I'm not dumb, but a woman has needs. I set up a therapy session for our 13 year old at the end of the week. She's his biologically, but I've been her mama and the closest parent to her since we met when she was three. I don't want her feeling abandoned. The only thing we don't agree on actually is her living with me when he's ready to move out. I know she would want to. He knows the same, but he hates the idea of her not going to his apartment with him. Per the therapist's recommendation, I told him we needed to schedule a sit down talk with our daughter about the divorce before our therapy session. He was quiet and said, I'll see, and left it at that. I asked again last night while our teen was at soccer practice and the two little ones were asleep in the car after a family day out. Perfect time to talk, right? Apparently I was wrong and he said he decided that we're going to hold off on talking to her about it. I told him I don't agree and, and then he said his decision was final and that we would go to therapy with her to work on our communication as a family, not to discuss the divorce as planned. I'm pissed because I've had to prepare so much for this transition and now dude's dragging his feet. I want him in the guest room already so he can stop trying to touch my feet in bed with his and we can both move on with our lives. Can't do that until we tell our daughter and I don't want her being blindsided in all of this. The therapist told us that the more we keep our teen in the loop with the process, the better. So, am I the asshole for pushing the issue? He wanted this so he needs to man up and face the music. Am I being insensitive? So, as always, there were some replies from the OP. So, Daisies and Daffodil says, and quotes OP and says, we have sex, but I keep things professional otherwise. And then laughs. OP replies that saying, yes, after reading that, I'm dumber than I thought. Lol. Wild Cauliflower says, sleeps with him, check, 
has sex with him, check. Works for business for free, check. Agrees to a weird custody agreement, check. Operates as if still married, check. He's the final decision maker, check. Then says, are you sure you're getting divorced? Is he still thinking that you're getting divorced? Opie says, I see it now. In my defense, I didn't want the divorce, still don't. Just want out of this limbo. It says, but I can't do that. I'd be making changes clearly. Fun Revolution says, so you wanted to postpone the divorce until you're prepared, but now you want him to not delay things and speed up now that you're ready. OP says postponing was three years, so our little list would be in kinder and not childcare. I went and found a job in my profession that would have reduced childcare for him. Still working with the employer to assure I can bring all of my kids with me as I homeschool our eldest and our middle would be attending as well. So I'm able to move on now securely, since that he's gotten cold feet about it all. I just don't want to ask friends or family because I know they're taught me into leaving instead of giving it my last shot. I came into this marriage knowing times would be hard. I myself have wanted to quit so many times but never did. Him quitting affects all of our lives. I'm not ready to give up on my family but will walk away if it means better parents for our kids. I just don't want us growing a relationship of hate for our kids to tiptoe around for the rest of our lives. I'm not spiteful but he's very proud. That's why I'm so compliant. At the end of the day, my kids are my focus. We have enough assets and money for me to be okay financially. It's more me pushing the issue or not. Another commenter says, you're the asshole to yourself, respectfully and with compassion. Are you in therapy? Get out of that house and stop letting this man traumatize the entire family with dragging his feet. You think the kiddos don't know something is up and is not messing with their heads. You're an adult and a mother, so you do what's right for the kids, which means clear emotional boundaries, no sleeping together, between the two adults. You're not being honest with yourself if you really think that's not muddying the waters in your decision making. Move forward with a divorce and set an ultimatum that your daughter will be told in X days. He can be there or he cannot, it's his choice. Choose your dignity, self-esteem and your kids' well-being over whatever this mess is. You all deserve so much better because I can guarantee with my entire being, the moment your husband finds the next one, he's gonna drop you so fast. Leave now, quit enabling him dragging his feet and using you as a placeholder. And that was the way I kind of found myself and like the way the comments went is like, it's just really messy that you're divorcing this man, but you're also working for him for free. You know, you're still having sex with him and it still seems like a relationship in some ways. And whenever there's like kids involved, my head always goes to that place. It's like, what are the kids thinking in this situation? Is this messing with their head? Like that last comment said that they are likely noticing what's going on and it's got to be confusing, right? But a couple of days later, Opie comes in to update the post and says, thank you to everyone that told me what I needed to hear. I clearly needed a reality check. Was being a wife without the support of a husband? I guess I've been so used to being treated poorly, it never occurred to me that I actually have any power in this situation. Child of a narcissist father and misogynistic mother. For everyone wondering, assets are all in my name as well as his. I'm not completely stupid. The business is in his because he started it before we met. It was small when we met and I've helped expand it extensively throughout the years. No payroll was a joint decision because we filed jointly and wanted to save on taxes to put money back into the business. It was a smart choice because his income was ballooned and we've been able to live comfortably throughout the years. I get the SS benefit conversation. I didn't think I was ever going to get divorced, guys. Give me a break. I've spoken to my husband and he is set on divorcing. I have a therapy session for myself scheduled this week and a follow-up interview for a job that would allow me to bring my children along with me every day huge blessing. I'm enrolled in school and I'm going to finish out my degree while working full time. I have a lot to think about with regard to what to ask for child support wise and how to structure the parenting plan. My biggest fear for leaving all these years has been losing my daughter in the process. She is 13 now with a cell phone so I can communicate every day which helps. But sadly, even if I get to keep our main house and get my fair share of the money, if my ex wants to keep our teen daughter away and change her number, he has every right to do so legally. I have no rights over my stepdaughter in my state, unless my husband and his ex give up their rights or she elects for emancipation. 
neither of which will ever happen. My kids are my everything. She's my first child in my eyes and I treat her no differently than I do the ones that came from my body. With that said, you can all say I'm dumb for 50-50, but I'm looking to keep the peace. Money isn't everything. The alimony and child support and new job will be more than enough to sustain my kids and myself until I finish my degree. I can't afford to miss out on these years with my teen daughter if he's bitter. Thank you all. Even the arseholes on here for telling me what I needed to hear. I know you all are wondering. I told him no more sex as he tried last night. It's off the table completely. I was stupid to think I was helping myself out with that one. You all let me know that. I set a date for our daughter to be told before our family therapy session. If not, I will talk to her without him. I'll update when life gets better. And I'm sure it will. Send in your love from a former sex bot slash slave trying to find her voice. Take care, you But now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story, which was suggested over on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it these days, from Nikki Says What, who says you've got to cover this wild ass situation. <laughs> so we will. It's a bit of a shorter story, but does have an update as well. From the Am I the Arsehole Here subreddit from Specialist Ask 1719 and says, Am I the Arsehole Here for screaming at my husband to get out after he pranked me with flowers? My husband and my marriage is not going well. I am very close to divorce and I've talked to him about it. I told him I wanted some effort. I wanted flowers, chocolate, a nicely written note. Something that showed he wanted to romance me. He finally took it seriously and agreed. When I came home from a 12-hour shift yesterday, he laid a trail of rose petals in our house. It was so beautiful. The trail ended at the kitchen sink where he piled up a bunch of dirty dishes, pots and pans to clean. Oh, you burk. He said he got the idea from TikTok. I screamed at him to get out of my house. He left after arguing a bit. I cried. Some of my friends said I was right, but others says he was just being playful. Am I the asshole here? Now, obviously, we're missing a whole lot of what the hell is going on in their relationship that they're already at the point of nearing divorce, you know. It kind of feels like if you're doing that, you're trying to sort of like push for that divorce if you're going down this road because what else could go through your head you know you know your relationship is on the rocks is potentially ending in a divorce soon and you think okay she's requested flowers she's requested some chocolate and you know a bit of romance i know what to do i'm gonna set up petals to the kitchen sink because i've seen it on tiktok no way man there is no way you think your partner again with the relationship the state that it's in is going to laugh at that and there's no way you could think that either significant cat 3 says not the arsehole is he trying to get a divorce without outright initiating it that's the only explanation i can think of other than him being obtuse hope he says he thought i should find it funny i don't even know why gargantuan green goat says so the video he watched saw a woman come in be excited for flowers, then be downcast, angry, and sad at the counter, and he wanted to see you in the same position. He didn't think you'd find it funny. He thought you'd be humiliated, and he would find that funny. Throw this one out, he's gone rotten. Cream of Witsky says, he knew what he was doing. He was trying to demoralize OP. How dare she ask him to put more effort into the relationship? She's there to serve him in his mind, not the other way around. It's a win-win for him. Either she gets the message and he gets his way or they break up and he gets to pretend it's her fault because she can't take a joke. Dump his ass and don't look back. And as you can imagine, the comments just went absolutely crazy. So let's just jump straight into OP's update that says, My husband came back home last night. I'd called off and then he ruined it by saying I was overreacting, that it was funny and he wanted to make me laugh. I told him I was going to file for divorce because it was the last straw. He then started crying and begging me not to. He begged me to give him a second chance. I said he already got a second chance and he squandered it by reminding me that I do all the daily chores in this house. This was why our marriage was rocky. 
I work in the medical field while he's a blue collar worker. Both of our jobs require long hours, but if I mess up, people die. He once said that I went through all that schooling just to get covered in blood and shit. He took it back, but he wanted to make me feel low. He started doing that a bit after COVID started. I do the cooking and cleaning. I do the laundry, the sweeping, the dentist appointments. All he does is create more work for me. He wanted me to pack him lunch because his friend's wives do. His friend's wives are either stay-at-home mums or they have part-time jobs. I do not have the time or energy to do that. He said he mows the lawn. Well, guess what? It's winter and I have to shovel the driveway because I'd work in the morning and he had the day off. I make more money. I bought our house at a low rate during COVID because his credit was too low. I had to save the money for a down payment. I pay our mortgage. What did he contribute to my life? If I didn't have him in my life, I would have clean floors all the time and more money. At least he could contribute love. He said he loved me, but he doesn't do anything to prove it. So I asked him for flowers or chocolates or a nice card, literally anything to show some love. But instead, he dropped flower petals to a sink full of dirty dishes, pots and pans. It's not even original. I'm done. I'm going to file for divorce. That story felt like it was a quick, clean cut, job done, I'm out of here kind of thing. Which was not a surprise with the way things went down. Wife went, you know, our relationship is absolutely on the rocks. I need more romance. So what does the husband decide to do? The complete opposite. And then shocked, then crying that she's like, well, fuck it, we're divorcing. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. But anyway... I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Put yourself in OP shoes. How would you deal with that one? Holy moly. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, every once in a while, I'd like to cover just a, you know, a cheeky little story from the top of Am I the Arsehole? Because, you know, <laughs> sometimes it kicks off and I got to get involved. And this one doesn't have an update, of course. It's from No Note 3098 and says... Am I the asshole for giving my sister-in-law three days notice that I would no longer make a cake for her daughter's third birthday after finding out she and her parents told others my history? I, 28 female, love to bake and I will often make cakes and stuff for friends and since I met my in-laws in 2018, for them as well. My sister-in-law asked me to bake her daughter's birthday cake for her birthday this weekend. This was back in October and we discussed what she wanted in detail. It's not my first time making her cakes, but it's my first time as a sister-in-law officially and where I felt like I was truly part of a family. Three days ago, I was out grocery shopping and I ran into a family friend of my in-laws. This person is not someone I like very much. She's a bad gossip and seems to have some malice in her while sharing gossip about others. I try to be polite to everyone and normally I don't talk to her, but she stopped me and went out of her way to ask when my husband and I are having kids. Then she mentioned me being a foster kid and an affair baby and she did it in a way that was meant to come across as actual concern but was really her being intrusive and cruel. She mentioned that my in-laws and sister-in-law were concerned about our kids not having anyone. I told my husband when he got home from work and I was a mess. It might seem dumb but I felt like his family betrayed the trust I put in them and they did the one thing they were asked not to do which was tell people about my history. It's not something I want to broadcast to everyone who knows me. My husband confronted his parents and sister and they said they only mentioned it to a few close circle people and they defended it when my husband said that wasn't okay. sister in law said it's not like people wouldn't find out eventually and he asked her how would they find out if we never told them. My history is that both my parents were married to others and had children with other spouses when they had an affair. I was the result. Both sets of first children were technically adults or close to it when I was born. The day before my fifth birthday, we were in the car together and it crashed. My parents died and so did the people in the other car. I was the only survivor and I was in hospital for a few weeks after. Nobody in either of my parents' families wanted me and I was brought up in foster care for the rest of my life. I never found a family. After hearing sister-in-law say what she did and realize how unapologetic they were and hearing how little they cared about what they did to me, I asked if I could speak to sister-in-law for a sec and told her not to expect a cake from me after going against what I wanted and having such little care for the harm it caused. She went crazy 
and said it was only three days until the birthday party. My husband backed me up and said, so what? She and their parents were blowing up his phone so bad he had to block them. And I'm worried that I'm being a bit of an asshole saying no with such short notice. Am I the asshole? No, pretty simple one for me. This is like a simple trust issue. You trusted them with your private information. They broke that trust by spreading it around. But it broke my heart the way that you said, you know, you felt a part of the family to be making a cake, although you've done it in the past. But now that she was your sister-in-law, you know, you felt like it was a family thing to do. And then they go and do this kind of shit. That must be devastating for you. Especially considering everything you've been through so far. I am incredibly sorry to hear that. That's got me a bit choked up. I got, I got to be honest. Fair play to your husband for having your back though in this. Aggressive bed says, not the arsehole. They treated you like family to your face. Were willing to have you bake cakes for them. But they couldn't not share your personal backstory to others after being told explicitly not to. Huge violation of trust. And I'm very happy to hear that your husband is backing you up and setting a boundary with his family. I'm also very sorry to hear that you're going through this. It must be heartbreaking. Not the arsehole. Opie says it is. I feel like uh, another family has just proven they do not care about me at all after going through that my whole childhood. It's not easy to face it again. Midnight's Rose says absolutely not the arsehole. She betrayed you in the worst possible way. I'm so sorry. Honestly, I feel like my words are insufficient. I wish I could hug you, OP. Your husband is awesome for having your back on this. And final comment which says, not the arsehole, your family history is not theirs to share. Whether or not you had explicitly told them not to beforehand. The fact that they did so, even then, is as disrespectful as it shows they have no consideration or empathy on your behalf. In which world did they think that you would take the news of your tragic past being shared around behind your back and not be mad about it? Are they so out of touch with reality they genuinely cannot see how wrong it is. Your sister in her is lucky. She even got a warning after what she and her parents did, especially considering how they aren't even apologetic about it. If I'd been in your shoes, she would have found out on the day of the birthday and I wouldn't have shown up with a promised cake or better yet, thrown that whole cake right up in her face. Kudos for your husband to take your side and defend your honor. He should be the one to get that cake instead. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. A just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. It is absolutely amazing seeing, you know, the same face in the comments, new faces in the comments. It just blows my mind every single day. So thank you. You're incredible. Do not forget that. And I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.